Hi there, I want to talk to you today about the EV charger market and how and indeed why charge point operators need to be thinking about managing IoT devices. I've got these four slides to talk you through. I want to give you a really quick introduction to Sarcom so that you can see why we're interested in this field. The EV charger market is a high growth segment. So I've got a slide showing the charger numbers now and predicted growth targets. I've got a slide on business models and interesting collaborations that we've heard about. And I'll wrap up by showing how the four main goals of a charge point operator are underpinned by a well-designed and managed IoT infrastructure. So a quick introduction to Soracom. We are an IoT connectivity platform founded in 2015 by AWS and Telcom's veterans. We work with businesses to develop secure, scalable IoT solutions to launch into the market. Our headquarters are in Japan, and we are a global company with teams covering Europe and UK, North America, and Asia Pacific markets. We focus primarily on cellular connectivity, with supported solutions for traditional Ethernet and Wi Fi devices, Sigfox, and their new trial with satellite IoT connectivity. We also have a suite of platform products that our customers use both to manage their devices and to transform, secure, and integrate their own IoT data. Our services are used by more than 20,000 enterprises, SMBs, and startups, with a SIM in over 4 million devices globally across many verticals. I'm Duncan Fraser, a product manager at Soracom, and it's my job to support the way our customers in Europe are using our products and to be successful with IoT. Going back to my introduction, I said that EV charging infrastructure is a high growth market segment. The UK government is committed to stopping the sale of new petrol and diesel vehicles by 2030 and to ensure that all new cars and vans are sold as zero emission by 2035. To support this switchover to electric vehicles at that rate, we need a massive increase in charging infrastructure, but we're not going fast enough. In this chart from the Ministry of Transport and Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders, there are around 330,000 home charger installations today, 32,000 chargers at work, and about the same number of public charging stations. Currently, the share of plug-in vehicle registrations each year is about 15 to 20%. So when you look at the UK's government's 2030 goals, the number of home EV chargers alone needs to grow to about 6 million. That's a lot of installations to be done pretty quickly. The diagram here shows the basic roles and business models in the EV charging ecosystem. The charge point operator is in the central role, buying energy from the grid operator and selling it to EV owners. Grid operators obviously focus on the infrastructure to deliver power. EV owners are the paying customer. It's up to the charge point operator to make the business model work. Around charge point operating, we are now seeing companies building new services and applications, offering charging session subscriptions for EV owners, billing and authorization services to support and collaborate between charge point operators, and mapping and reservation solutions. And with bi-directional chargers, we're seeing business models that treat the EV as a power bank, delivering power back into the grid when it's required and topping the batteries back up when the grid is quieter. So now that we have some insight into the market size and its business models, let's look at how IoT is crucial to making charge point operators successful. So then, to support the business models, the charge point operator needs to hit these four main goals that you can see here. Installation of the charger, ongoing monitoring, enabling the integrations that allow the businesses to grow, and supporting the customer's experiences as this market matures. We hear constantly that cellular is the IoT connectivity solution of choice for EV chargers. All new chargers installed in homes now must be smart chargers with connectivity, so all new installation sites have a site survey before the fitter arrives. Typically, the charge point operator relies on cellular because it's ubiquitous and critically they don't have to think about any of the connectivity infrastructure to maintain the connection. Chargers are also built with Wi-Fi and Ethernet connections, but they're used as a fallback when the survey shows poor cellular coverage. Think about the headaches that Wi-Fi and Ethernet bring to the charge point operators. They would have to connect to a home owner's network and rely on their broadband link being stable. And if there's a problem, the operator can't send an engineer to debug the customer's router. And if they need Ethernet, then you're talking about drilling holes and running cables around the house to get to the charger. The charge point operators are using a cellular first approach 
because they can lean on their cellular connectivity provider to monitor and maintain the charger's data connection. And that in turn lowers the total cost of ownership for their fleet of connected chargers versus running an in-house networking team to monitor and maintain the network. Charge point monitoring is vital to the operator's business. Of course, the customer wants to ensure they can charge their car, but the operator needs to make sure there's billable activity. If there's an issue, they need to be able to know about the problem urgently, and they need the tools to remotely diagnose, ideally remedy, and at least send a site engineer to repair the charger with the right parts. Integrations are opening up a whole ecosystem around EV charging. We've talked to teams building battery store proof of concepts where EVs can be used to buffer energy from solar installations when the owners are out of the country, and billing payment services that the operators can use for their backend systems. All of these integrations rely on trustable, reliable data. Finally, we have the customer experience aspect, something I think is going to be growing in importance as this market matures. At the moment, EV owners are happy to be able to find a charger and top their cars up, but as charger numbers grow, I believe there's going to be a stronger focus on the experience that the customers are looking for as they choose tariffs, packages, and offers that operators are going to be making. So EV chargers already have the requirement that they must be connected. Charge point operators are looking past the basic data reporting functions to build better offerings and open up their business models, all of which is built on the IoT data that they collect from their devices, so they must manage their charges, their data, and their IoT infrastructure to be successful. Okay, that brings us to the end of the presentation. I've put a link to the EV charger area of our website on this closing slide, and a few resources to some of the blogs that we've written on the right-hand side of the slide. If you have any questions, you can contact us for the details on this slide, or take a look at the Soricon website and use the chatbot to set up a meeting and discuss how we can help you with your IoT requirements. Mm -hmm.